On the 23rd of October, Hazrat Khalifa al Masih gave a keynote address at a reception held in his honour at the occasion of the inauguration of the first Ahmadiyya Mosque in Brisbane, the Bayt al Masrur Mosque. The event was arranged at the mosque where various exhibitions on Islam and the Holy Quran had been displayed. Many guests, including state MPs, Logan and Brisbane City Councilmen and Mayors, the Queensland Police Commissioner and many of the local neighbours attended the event. Prior to the event, a few of the politicians and influential guests had an opportunity to sit privately with Hazrat Khalifa al Masih, where many congratulated His Holiness on the Ahmadiyya Muslim community services towards the local community, especially during heavy floods the previous year. Assalamu alaikum, may peace be on you. We start our proceedings with the recitation of the Holy Quran by Mudassar Mahmud, followed by translation by Inamul Haq Alvi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May peace and blessings of Allah be upon you. Two verses of the Holy Quran were recited from chapter 5, verse 9 and 10. English translation by Malvi Sher Ali Saab is presented now. O ye who believe, be steadfast in the cause of Allah. 
bearing witness in equity. And let not our people's animity incite you to act otherwise than with justice. Be always just, that is nearer to righteousness, and fear Allah. Surely, Allah is aware of what you do. Allah has promised those who believe and do good deeds, and they shall have forgiveness and a great reward. Zakallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, ever merciful. Ladies and gentlemen, beloved Huzur, ladies and gentlemen, and honorable guests, it's my great honor to welcome you all here uh, to this reception dinner organized in honor of His Holiness, Hazmeza Masroor Ahmad, Khalifatul Masih V. We have a diverse range of people in the room, and we're going to celebrate His Holiness and His championing peace. Ahmadiyya Muslim, Muslim community is a dynamic, fast-growing international revival movement within Islam. Founded in 1889, it spans over 195 countries, with membership exceeding tens of millions. Locally, our history is about 114 years old when Hassan Musa Khan accepted the Ahmadiyya about 114 years ago. Uh, there are graves of Ahmadiyya in the local suburbs of Mount Gravat. Locally, here in Stockley, our history is about 12 to 14 years old. And in the past 14 years, we have seen you and many more in different parts of humanitarian work community work that we've done, and other charity uh, events that we organize. Now, to formally welcome His Holiness, I would request the president of the Ahmadiyya community, Abdul Salam Aslam Sahab, to come and formally welcome you. In the name of Allah, most gracious, ever merciful, most beloved Hazur, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum, may peace be with you all. On behalf of MDA Muslim community, Brisbane, I am honored to welcome all of you to this historical inaugural reception of the very first Ahmadiyya Mosque, Betul Masroor, in Brisbane. This event has been organized in honor of His Holiness Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmad, the fifth successor to the founder of Ahmadiyya community, Ahmadiyya Muslim community. This evening, it is also a privilege and honor of me to introduce to you a man who represents the promised Messiah of this age. As a tireless champion of global peace, he is the worldwide spiritual and administrative head of this international religious organization, with tens of millions of members <coughs> spread across more than 200 countries. He is the world's leading Muslim figure who through his sermons, lectures, books, and personal meetings promotes, above all, peace and inter-religious harmony. He advocates continuously for a just society and the separation of religion and state. In 2004, 2004, His Holiness launched the annual National Peace Symposium in which guests from all walks of life came, came together to exchange ideas on promotion of peace and harmony. In 2009, he also launched the annual International Ahmadiyya Muslim Prize to promote peace. In 2012, both the United States Congress and European Parliament shared his wisdom and benefited directly from his message of peace, justice, and unity. On the 27th of June, 2012, he was welcomed to Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C., 
where he delivered a keynote address entitled The Path to Peace, Just Relations Between Nations, to an audience of more than 115 guests, including more than 35 members of the United States Congress, representative of various think tanks, representatives of Pentagon and various others. In conjunction with this historic event, a bipartisan resolution was introduced in the House of Representatives in honor of his, in honor of his Holiness, Holiness's visit. On the 4th of December 2012, His Holiness delivered a historic keynote address at the European Parliament in Brussels to a packed audience of more than 350 guests, representing 30 countries, including the President of European Parliament. During his address, he called on the European Union to preserve its unity and called for equality and justice in the international relations. He has traveled globally to promote and facilitate service to humanity. He regularly meets presidents, prime ministers, other heads of state, parliamentarians, and state ambassadors. His Holiness takes a particular interest in alleviating the suffering of developing nations by helping to improve their agriculture and facilitating access to food, clean water, and electricity. Likewise, he supports the work of Humanity First, an independent international non-benefit disaster relief and development charity. Under his leadership, the Ambia Muslim community has built a number of schools and hospitals providing high-class facilities in remote and underdeveloped parts of the world. Through various schemes, irrespective of the ethnicity, social status, and religious background, His Holiness has funded the tuition and education of numerous underprivileged students. And internationally, His Holiness has been involved in various public and private events spreading the message of peace, tolerance, harmony, and religious freedom. To finish, I wish these historical moments of joy and bendications bendic remain engraved forever in the memories of every participants. Thank you very much. Thank you. We also acknowledge the traditional elders of the land of Ugambe people where we meet tonight. I would also like to pay respect to the elders, both past and present, of the Mulanjali people and extend the respect to other Aboriginals present. May I please now request Auntie Robbie, the traditional Yugambe elder and a Mulanjali elder, to come and uh, uh, make his comments and welcome Sue. Thank you. His Holiness, distinguished guests, Jingari in Yugambe language means hello. I'm a proud Mulanjali woman through links on my father's side and a Birigaba woman through links on my mother's side. I'm quite honoured to be here tonight to welcome you all to Yugambe land. Aboriginal people would have to be one of the most happiest, friendliest people here and we are so glad that we can share our land with not only our Australian counterparts but from other people from other areas. I'm also... Um, very privileged to be here. I can go to my school tomorrow and tell my school children that this is what I did last night. It was something that I have never ever done in my life. So this is something new for me. So I think by having this mosque here in Logan on Yugan Bear Country, we can all come together as one and we can learn both about all of us about our traditions, not only Indigenous traditions, but this tradition as well. And we have been a part of um, each other's traditions because some of the members of this community have participated in the Drumley Walk. Now that is a walk that is held every year and it goes from Bow Desert to Southport and it, um, what, it, what it does, it, it um, pays homage to a man by the name of Billy Drumley and he used to walk from, from Bow Desert to Southport to visit his family. 
and it is now a regular occurrence and the community here have participated in that event and that is one way of us getting to know about you guys and them getting to know about us. So as a Malanjali elder, I really do welcome you all here to um, Yugen Bear country and as, as a token or as a part of respect from my community, from my Yugen Bear community, I would love His Holiness to accept a gift on behalf of us and it's actually um, a didgeridoo made by a local artist by the name of Uncle Joey Skeen. Um, so if you could please accept that. With a didgeridoo, Aboriginal women aren't allowed to touch them or play them, so I've asked um, Mr Ladder, the MP, to, to present it. So, yeah. I'll just finish off by saying, Jingi Walu Walu Jingi, welcome to Yugen Bear Country. Thank you very much, Auntie Robin. May I please now request the Deputy Mayor of Logan City Council, Deputy Mayor Russell Lutton, to come and welcome His Holiness. Thank you and good evening. <clears throat> At the outset, I'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, the Yugambia speaking people, uh, their elders past, present and future, and especially Auntie Robin, um, uh, who is a, a fine representative of uh, our traditional owners. I'd also like to acknowledge the presence of, uh, of course, His Holiness, but uh, some of the uh, members of parliament, uh, federal member Jim Chalmers, our state members, Mike Ladder, Michael Pucci, Anthony Shorten, I think I saw Freya Ostropovich out there, and uh, also my fellow councillor, Phil Pigeon. Uh, our CEO of Logan City Council, Mr Chris Rose, over here, and um, also the Police Commissioner, Ian Stewart, welcome, and um, uh, it's great to see you arrive. As so many of our, uh, uh, our uh, special um, guests here tonight are, are people who make Logan City uh, what it is, so it's, an, it's in, indeed an honour to, to be with you here tonight. On behalf of the Logan community, I would like to sincerely welcome His Holiness Hadrat Mirza Masrur Ahmad Khalifatul Masih V to our wonderful city. I hope I got that right. The fifth caliph of the Ahmadiyya Muslim uh, community. We are delighted and honoured to have His Holiness uh, visit, us, visit with us and trust his stay will be a pleasant and peaceful one. Today is a day to celebrate for a number of reasons. There is a, this is only the second time in Islam Ahmadiyya's 110-year presence that a caliph has visited Queensland, and we are extremely delighted his visit, had, his visit has centred on Logan City. In his position of caliph, His Holiness serves as the worldwide spiritual and administrative head of the Ahmadiyya community, which includes tens of millions of people and is spread throughout more than 200 countries, including Australia. I have it on good authority that Logan City is actually home to the largest Ahmadiyya community in Australia. Almost 300 Ahmadiyya members reside in Logan City and a further 43 have either properties or businesses based within the city's boundaries. Since 1999, the Ahmadiyya community have been based in Stockley and have successfully operated and initiated a vast number of positive initiatives for the immediate and broader community. After talking to a few people and asking a few questions, I've quickly realised just how at home the Armadeo community are in Logan City and what a valuable contribution they make to the way of life of so many. A city brimming with more than 200 cultures, Logan prides itself on its richness, richness of cultures and the ability of this diversity to be able to work, live and play hand in hand with each other. The Armadeo community has certainly contributed in a positive way to Logan and the surrounding community. Whether it is the annual Clean Up Australia Day activities, Red Cross appeals, Biggest Morning Tea, Drumley Walk or Clean Up from 2011 and 2013 floods, the Armadeo community have a clear focus on helping their fellow man. 
When floodwaters tore a path through Logan City in January this year, more than 50 members of the Armadare community donned the rubber gloves and spent many days assisting in the clean-up effort. While families came to terms with the loss of their belongings, they were fortunate in that they could have the generous members of the community to lean on in their time of crisis. Their work in the January flood saw them spend two weekends coming to the aid of devastated residents in Logan Village and Bean Lee as part of the Logan Mud Army. And when that clean-up was over, they travelled up to Bundaberg to pitch in and help their flood-ravaged community. They also distributed relief goods to those affected by the floods. This is a community that regularly and freely gives back to their city and its people. The neighbouring suburb of Jimboomba and Browns Plains have certainly benefited from the Armadale community's gener generous contributions. Since 2000, members of the Armadale community have participated in the Clean Up Australia Day event in these two suburbs. Every year, between 100 and 150 members clean up to 10 kilometres of roadside along Stockley Road and in Jimboomba's Rotary Park and in the General Browns Plains area. Every year, the community opens the doors to its Baital Mosra Mosque to conduct the annual blood donation campaign, Blood for Life, while on average 40 people donate their time to fundraise for the Red Cross. Migrants are occasionally criticised for not giving back to their new country. That certainly cannot be said for the Armadale community. They have a clear and devoted love for Australia and make an invaluable contrib contribution to people in need. It is this kindness and compassion that the world needs more of. And I openly and warmly officially welcome not just His Holiness to our community, but the entire Armadale community. In closing, I'd like to again welcome His Holiness to our city and commend and thank him for the contribution his people make to our community each and every day. I'm delighted the Armadale community selected Stockley as the site for this magnificent mosque and I'm extremely honoured His Holiness could be here to officially commemorate the opening. I wish them every success in the continued pursuit of spreading the all imp important message of humanity first. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, may I please request now uh, Dr. Jim Chalmers, the federal MP uh, of Morton, to please come and welcome his oldness. Dr. Jim. Thank you, Hassan. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Your Holiness, it is a special honour to be part of welcoming you to our part of the world and to do so at the same time as we are opening a fantastic mosque next door makes it even more special. Can I acknowledge everyone in the community, in this community, everyone who was involved in the building of that mosque, everyone who worships here. Can I also acknowledge my state uh, colleagues, parliamentary colleagues and council colleagues as well. Uh, and Arnie Robin, thank you for that wonderful welcome to country. Uh, it's always a wonderful welcome to country you give Arnie Robin, and we appreciate it a great deal. Uh, I also want to single out uh, for a special mention, rather than go through all the politicians again in the room, uh, that there are people here from the law enforcement community, there are people here from our schools, people here from the business community, people here from all sections of the Logan community. And I take it as a sign of real confidence uh, in this uh, community here and in its future not just the brand new mosque next door, but the level of commitment from all of us who seek to play a positive role in the broader Logan community. Last time I was here, the building was uh, half finished uh, and it's wonderful to see the freshly laid grass now and smell the fresh paint uh, and the fresh carpet. It's just a tremendous tribute to this community uh, that there's such a special place now to worship. 
Uh, I promised when I was here last time, I promised Esan and the whole community that I would come back for tonight. And so I really want to thank you for including me in such a special occasion. It's not every day that an area like ours gets to welcome someone of such status and such stature in the global community. And uh, as Russell and others have said, uh, His Holiness uh, spends time with prime ministers and presidents. He addresses congresses and, mem and houses of parliament. Uh, and so to have him here in our Logan community knowing uh, the influence that he has in the world and the status that he has in the world is a really special honour. Our local community is a very diverse one. It comprises many nationalities and many faiths. And we draw great strength from that diversity as a community. But there's always more we can do to understand each other, to build tolerance and respect, to understand where each other is coming from. Even when we don't share the same faith, we can share the same faith in the positive influence uh, of religion and the positive influence of community work, some of the great things that Russell ran through before. Making a contribution to the community is something that we all, by being here tonight, by putting our hand up for whatever parliament, by joining business groups, by leading schools, by being law enforcers, uh, we all share a belief in that basic concept that if we give our time and our effort, then we can make our community a better place. And that's really where this slogan, love for all and hatred for none, is such an important thing because it demonstrates that you can be from any faith in our community and have a positive influence on the people around us. And I really see, Your Holiness, I see your visit in that light um, as a way to better understand from the very highest levels of this faith um, just what um, your beliefs are and your commitment is to the community. So thank you again uh, for allowing me to be part of the evening. Thank you from, on behalf of all of us for the opportunity to meet with you and speak with you. Uh, like everybody here, I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts a little bit later on, on such a special occasion in this beautiful new place of worship in a community we all greatly admire. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jim Chalmers, um, for Lampy. May I please now request Michael Lutter, MP, um, State Member for Waterford, to please uh, welcome his oldness and um, give some remarks. Thank you, Hassan, and good evening, everybody. Uh, much like Jim, I have to say, I probably won't spend a great degree of time acknowledging the dignitaries here. They're certainly very many in number. Um, but of course, I will acknowledge my state colleagues, uh, the member for Logan, Michael Pucci, a member for Old Jester, uh, Mr. Anthony Shorten, and my colleague in the audience, uh, a member for Stretton, uh, Mrs. Freya Osipovich. Ladies and gentlemen, it was with some conflict, I have to tell you, that I agreed to speak this evening. And indeed, when I was asked, having done some research uh, on His Holiness uh, and certainly his very, very high calibre background and the sort of people that he has met with, I asked the question, why are you asking me? Uh, I am just a humble member of parliament uh, in this city of Logan. I'm sure there are many, many others and indeed here tonight you see them, that would stand before I would. And I have to say, it was certainly a very great privilege and an honour when the response came to some effect to this, this reply. And it was, Mike, I'm not asking you because you are the member for Waterford. I'm not asking you necessarily because you are a member of parliament, though we respect that greatly. I'm asking you because of the person you are. Your Holiness, I will beg your indulgence tonight and your forgiveness. I'm not speaking to your community this evening. Uh, I would speak directly to you because I've put a great deal of thought into what I was going to say tonight. And I have to say, I want to stand and provide testament to the community, my friends, your faithful who are here this evening. In recent times, and I mentioned to you earlier this evening that this is a conflicted country in terms of the weather that we experience. It was famously said that we are a country of, flat, of drought and flooding rains. And so it is true at the moment. 
But earlier this year, we experienced flooding across our state. And indeed, for the first time and to a greater extent than we have received for a very long time, uh, we received significant flooding in our city. And I have to say, it was a wonderful pleasure that through that disaster, and there are many people here who helped, uh, certainly I acknowledge our Commissioner Ian Stewart and the work that he has done throughout the state, uh, my colleagues from the police force and everything that they did on the ground, and of course, and in particular, my friends and colleagues from the local council and our councillors as well, uh, Phil Pigeon particularly. I have to say, to stand there uh, in the mud and in the debris and have standing beside me your community, without any question, they were there to help. And may I say, when I was asked today to speak because of the sort of person I am, I stand here as that person purely because I worked with the sort of people that they are. So Your Holiness, when you work under the creed or ethos or ideology of love for all and hatred for none, when you speak of peace and promote that message across the rest of the world, and you talk about service unto others, let me say that your message is alive and well in our community and it is being spread every day through the actions of your faithful. I will finish finally on, I guess, a, 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 another and slightly different note. I was sitting here this evening and I was thinking prayer comes in many forms and certainly to me prayer sounds very different than it did this evening. And this evening I must say the prayer that I heard was a first for me. But it was both haunting and beautiful to hear. I do not know what was said. I do not understand or speak the language that was spoken this evening. But I can tell you with absolute certainty and with the greatest of sincerity that I felt the beauty of those words as they were spoken. So I thank you, Holiness. I welcome you to our place, to our state and to our country, and may I say to your community, in closing, thank you for your friendship, your help and your support. Yeah. Holiness, uh, I would also take the opportunity this evening to present you uh, with some small gift uh, in remembrance of this particular occasion and certainly no small occasion in the opening of this mosque here this evening. So, Your Holiness, may I present you with the following. Thank you, Michael. May I please now request Commissioner of Police, Ian Stewart, Queensland Police Service, to please come and welcome His Holiness. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Holiness, it's wonderful to have you here, and I acknowledge you as our guest of honour tonight. Uh, to those who invited me along and my colleagues, and there are a number of my uh, police colleagues in the audience, I thank you very, very much. Uh, to all of the distinguished guests, particularly the members uh, of parliament, uh, certainly, and the federal members, uh, and also to our great friend uh, from the Deputy Mayor, Russell Luton of Logan City. Uh, thank you very, very much for your kind words bef before, sir. One would wonder what's a police commissioner doing in this room? Uh, why, why would I even be invited along to uh, such an august uh, group uh, welcoming His Holiness uh, to here in Brisbane and, and in fact to Australia? Uh, well, I think what, it, what the invitation and my presence underpins is the relationship that the police department in this state enjoys with all of its community. We are your police department. 
uh, I am your police commissioner and I'm very, very proud and honoured to have that role. It certainly is wonderful to have uh, a person of the stature of His Holiness visit our city, um, to think that uh, a world leader of this class uh, comes here uh, to enjoy our hospitality, uh, but also to be with his community in this state and in this city, I think uh, speaks loads about the community that he leads. Certainly, the Queensland Police Service, as you know, has as one of its three key themes and three key goals to build relationships every day with our community. And our community is an inclusive community here in Queensland. We don't have divides within our community. Uh, we are Queenslanders, no matter what race or colour or creed that you come from or practise, no matter what cultural background. We are Queenslanders at heart, all of us. Uh, and it behoves the Queensland Police Service to serve all of you. In the last couple of weeks, you will see that we've been given an enormous task by the government in relation to uh, criminals who think that they can be amongst us without consequence. Uh, the government has made it very clear and provided the wherewithal for us to pursue those people, dismantle their networks and drive them out of this state. That single goal, I think, speaks, speaks loads about how inclusive this community is that we intend to protect our entire community from these criminals and do it in a way which is still professional, which is still lawful, but is carried out with great rigour and resolution. All of us, every one of us in this room will benefit from having people who have no respect for every person who sits in this room, for, has no respect for people like His Holiness, uh, that we can work to drive them from uh, our community, uh, to make our community a better place. The three values that I asked all of my members to take on board when I became commissioner almost 12 months ago uh, were quite simple. I asked them to do their job with courage, to do their job fairly, with fairness, and to do it with pride. Uh, I imagine that those values are values that His Holiness also values. Uh, as part of the community, because it does take courage to be uh, different in terms of having a different cultural uh, background and, and following a different religious uh, uh, values. Um, and certainly it does take that courage of conviction, not necessarily a physical courage, but a moral courage. And I congratulate uh, His Holiness and his community on that. But that fairness, treating people with, uh, with respect, being equitable, uh, I know is a key fundamental, sir, of your association. And pride, I can see that uh, uh, your association has that in, uh, certainly in spades. It has bucket loads of it. I see it by the people who are here tonight, uh, the, the way that they provide respect to you, sir. Uh, so uh, whilst it might seem a bit incongruous that a police commissioner is asked to speak at an event like this, I can tell you that I think it is most appropriate. It is most appropriate because I serve every one of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ian. May I now please have Michael Pukki, State MP for Logan, to please welcome his illness. Thank you. That's Michael Pucci, by the way, just so, in case you're taking this. Yeah. Gucci spelled with a P. <laughs> okay. Uh, first of all, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land and, and pay uh, respect to their elders past and present, and specifically to Auntie Robin. It's always a pleasure to see you, Auntie Robin. We're getting to know each other very well over the past 18 months, so uh, uh, always do the best uh, welcoming ceremonies. 
Uh, Your Holiness, my parliamentary colleagues, uh, federal member Jim Chalmers, uh, state member Michael Ladder, member for Waterford, uh, member for Algester, Anthony Shorten, member for Stretton, Freya uh the commissioner, uh, the CEO, and all, all our uh, distinguished guests today, uh, welcome to our beautiful Logan. Uh, let me begin by saying what an honor it is to have Your Holiness here today in, in Logan. It's a, it's a great privilege, a great honor to share our community with you. And uh, a big part of the community is the Amadea community. Uh, we have a rich cultural fabric that holds the tapestry of our community together here in Logan, and uh, the Amadea community is a big part of that. And with such honorable people worshiping, living, and serving the community, we can do great things together, and we will continue to do great things together. Um, their support through the various charities uh, and various community organizations uh, in good times and in bad is ongoing, and uh, it shows great credit upon the community here and the entire faith. And, and uh, the work that they did during the devastating floods uh, brought great, great relief to many of our residents, and they will be remembered for many for their lives, I'm sure. They're terrific ambassadors, to, of the, not, not just the, of the Amadea community, but of the Logan community. They show the spirit that this community has, that they, are, they epitomize the spirit and uh, that this community has. And I am proud to have this mosque and this community within my electorate of Logan. And I look very much forward to maintaining a strong and firm relationship with them in the coming years and uh, well into the future. And uh, I wish you all peace uh, and love for all and hatred for none. And I leave you with this, together we can make anything happen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. It's now my distinct honor and a great privilege to request His Holiness, Hazrat Mirza Masroor Rahmad, Khalifatul Masih V, to please come and honor us with his keynote address. Yeah. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu amma ba'du fa a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim all the distinguished guests assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh peace and blessing of allah be upon you all Today is a day of great joy and a cause of celebration for the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, Australia here in Brisbane, as it is inaugurating its first ever mosque in this area. <clears throat> but before I go further, I would like to say that all the honorable guests who spoke here came here and after their speeches there was clapping but only auntie robin williams didn't have that gesture so now you should <laughs> clap for her <clears throat> a mosque holds huge significance and importance to any true Muslim. However, before I go on to speak about this, I would like to first of all express my heartfelt gratitude to all of our guests who have come to attend 
this inauguration and so are sharing in the happiness of the Ahmadiyya community. <clears throat> For all of you to attend the inauguration of a place of worship belonging to a Muslim organization in spite of not being associated to Islam or not the member of the community is a sign of your open mind, tolerance, and high moral standards. <clears throat> In light of this, however, much I thank you. It is not enough. In reality, the very concept of gratitude is actually a means of fulfilling the purpose for which this mosque was built <clears throat> and of fulfilling its rights. It is necessary for a true Muslim who believes that his life's purpose is to please God, to act in a way through which he can gain God's prayer. Certainly, to express appreciation and thanks is one of the ways to please God and to make a person a recipient of his rewards and blessings. God Almighty has very clearly stated in the Quran that if a person is grateful to him, he will bestow further bounties upon the person. According to our beliefs, the Holy Quran, which was revealed to the Holy Prophet Muhammad wasallam, is the final law-bearing book. And it was he who understood God's teachings best of all. Certainly, he had the greatest knowledge and insight of the Quran. And it was he who clearly explained the importance of gratitude. He taught that a person who does not thank mankind cannot be grateful to God Almighty. And so, whilst on one level, this teaching of expressing thanks and being grateful guides a person towards high moral values, it also takes a true Muslim towards attaining nearness to God. In light of this, whilst opening, uh, whilst the opening of uh, this mosque inspires us to thank Allah for blessing us with a place of worship in this area after a long wait. At the same time, it also inspires us to be grateful to all of you who have joined us to take part in our celebration and to share in our joy. <clears throat> Further, while surveilling this opportunity, I would also like to thank all of the local people who have greatly helped and assisted us in the construction of this mosque. <clears throat> the people who live locally are particularly deserving of our thanks because of our new neighbors had not given their consent. If our new neighbors had not given their consent, we would not have been able to build this mosque. And so I thank you all. I would also like to thank members of the local council <coughs> and the mayor for providing us with a place to build our mosque so we can join together to worship the one God. Certainly, the worship of God holds the utmost significance and importance to a true Muslim. Whilst, according to God's command, a very major objective for any Muslim is to bow down in prayer before his Lord five times a day. This is only one aspect of worship. In fact, for any true Muslim, worshipping God is something that is truly vast in scope 
and comprises much more than the obligatory prayers. We Ahmadi Muslims believe the founder of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad of Qadiyan al-Islam, to be the prominent Messiah and Imam Mahdi, the guided one of this age. We believe that he was sent in this era by God Almighty to propagate the true teachings of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. And so the Prophet Messiah clearly explained the concept of worship to us and he elucidated upon its true significance and reality reality <coughs> excuse me let me give a few examples that highlight the true nature of worship a muslim has been commanded to treat his wife with kindness and love and to not covet or cast his eyes upon her wealth or property it may be the case that a man is very regular in going to the mosque to offer his prayers. Yet, in his home, he does not treat his wife with love and tenderness as commanded by God. The truth is that, in such a case, his worship and prayers are remembered, uh, are rendered entirely meaningless. Indeed, God Almighty greatly dislikes such worship and such worshippers. Furthermore, Islam commands Muslims to treat their parents with love and consideration. And so, if they fail to do so, then their prayers are again entirely without value. <clears throat> God Almighty has further ordered Muslims to fulfill the rights of mankind, to serve humanity, and to always be just. If a, person, if a person fails to uphold these necessary values in his daily life, yet comes to the mosque regularly, his worship will become void and a cause of despair. Indeed, God Almighty has said that the prayers of a person who does not follow his commands will prove to be a means of destruction for him. So I quoted some of the examples. There are numerous examples in the Holy Quran or in the teachings of Islam. The truth is that if the prayers of a Muslim do not lead him towards fulfilling the rights of mankind, his prayers cannot be classed as real worship. The founder of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community has said, I show, to show love, to show love and compassion and to be sympathetic to humanity is a huge form of worship and is an excellent means of gaining Allah's player. Thus, true worship requires fulfilling the rights of mankind in an entirely selfless manner. The rights of others should be discharged purely for the sake of attaining God's player. When a person acts in this way, and with this spirit, he will find that God will consider not only his prayers to be worship, but will deem his every single good act to be a form of worship. Therefore, it is clear for all to see just how beautiful these teachings really are. So many avenues of success and worship have been created for those people who abide by God's commands. Whoever comes to the mosque to worship God, or in other words, a true Muslim who enters the mosque five times daily to bow down before his Lord, should constantly analyze himself. He should ask himself how many acts of goodness and compassion he has performed in the period between each prayer for the sake of fulfilling the rights owed to God's creation. If a person does not fulfill the rights due to mankind, then 
as I have already said, his worship is worthless. Thus, this is the reality of a mosque, and this is the reality of the worship of a true Muslim. And so, those people who hold any reservations about the construction of this mosque, or who are concerned by the potential impact of having a Muslim place of worship in this area, should be reassured. Similarly, there if there are any people who are concerned that those who live near the mosque will be disturbed in any way or who think that this mosque is something for the local people to fear, they too should rest easy in the knowledge that this will not be the case. <clears throat> All such people should remember that the Ahmadiyya Muslim community is an entirely peaceful organization which strives to follow the true and compassionate teachings of Islam. In our mosques, when the call to prayer is raised, calling Muslims towards the worship of God, one of the key proclamations is that they are called towards prosperity, meaning they are invited towards success and happiness. The Quran has said that only those people attain true success and salvation who call people towards goodness and who prevent or stop wrongdoing. In detailing what is right and what is wrong, Allah the Almighty has placed great emphasis on fulfilling the due rights of mankind and of caring for one another. In fact, God says that true contentment can only be achieved by those people who give preference to the needs of others over their own. Thus, from every possible perspective, the worship of God is, in, is intrinsically linked and interwoven with fulfilling the rights of mankind. This bond is so strong that if they are ever separated, man cannot fulfill the purpose for which God created him. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community endeavors to serve mankind throughout the world due to its love for humanity. Thus, it is, it is carrying out various humanitarian, humanitarian and educational projects in an effort to help poor and deprived people, irrespective of religion, creed, or color, in various parts of the world. Our sole motivation and guiding light are the real teachings of the Quran that have been explained to us in this era by the founder of the Ahmadiyya community, the promised Messiah. The schools, colleges, and hospitals we have established and are running have all been built as a means of fulfilling that overriding objective of having our worship accepted by God. To give just one example, the Ahmadiyya community is providing clean drinking water in some of the most remote parts of Africa and certain other poor countries, and we are doing so only as a means to seek the pleasure of God Almighty. It is due to the love and compassion we have in our hearts for all of mankind that the Ahmadiyya community constantly draws the attention of world leaders towards establishing peace and justice at all levels. We make such efforts because we want to save mankind from destruction and therefore we advocate justice because it is the only road to peace. The Holy Quran has not only explained 
the need for justice, but has also explained the standards of justice that are required. If it says that the enmity of any nation or people should not lead a person to act otherwise than with justice or fairness. It is absolutely against Islam's teachings to discard justice for the sake of furthering personal or vested interests or as a means of revenge. History bears witness to the fact that the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, fulfilled the requirements of justice by making a decision in favor of a Jewish person and against a Muslim. The Holy, Quran, uh, the Holy Prophet وسلم, did so because his understanding of the Quran was unparalleled, as was the way in which he fulfilled the rites of worship. Thus, I say once again that the worshippers who enter this mosque will not only bow down before God, but will be they who fulfill the rights of God's creation. All of the people who enter this mosque will be completely law-abiding. All of the people who enter this mosque will have a genuine and absolute love for this country and will believe that this love for their nation is an essential part of their faith. All of the people who enter this mosque will be those who fulfill, fulfill the rights of their, their neighbors rather than cause them any harm or discomfort. Indeed, Islam stresses the rights of neighbors to such a degree that the Holy Prophet Muhammad once said that God Almighty had emphasized the rights of one's neighbors to him so emphatically that he thought that per perhaps they would be included amongst a person's inheritors. And so what magnificent teachings we have been given to establish love and brotherhood within a society. All those who enter this mosque will be people who fulfill the rights of God and his creation. Any person who comes in the mosque other than this teaching or intention is not a true Muslim, rather defaming the name of Islam. And so this mosque will not only be known as a place of worship, but will also become known as an outstanding symbol of love, brotherhood, and compassion. At the end, I would like to speak very briefly about the current state of the world. It is my hope and my prayer that the people of this nation, and indeed the wider world, work towards removing all types of fears or anxieties that exist within their societies. I also pray that all government, governments fulfill the rights of justice and become those who establish peace in the world. Otherwise, there is little doubt that the world is rapidly heading towards disaster, as the devastating world war seems to draw ever closer. And if we fail to stop it in its tracks, we will have to face the most horrific consequences of a global war in which nuclear weapons will more than likely be used, causing nothing but carnage and devastation for decades to come. Our future generations will never forgive us if we allow such a catastrophe to occur. To save the world from such hor horrors, the people and government of Australia should also fulfill their responsibilities and play their respective roles. May Allah grant them the capability to do so. At the end, I would like to once again thank all of our guests who have taken the time to join us as we celebrate the opening of, of our 
mosque here in this area. May Allah bless you all. Thank you very much. <laughs> According to our tradition, at the end of uh, the formal functions, we offer silent prayers. So I will offer silent prayers. Amudis will, of course, join me, but every one of you can pray in your own way if you want. Silent prayer. I mean, just magnificent. Just the calmness of his voice um, made it easy to listen to. It was just beautiful, just beautiful. I, I, words can't describe how it was, but it was just lovely. And we are so honoured to have him here in our country. And yes, it's something that I will cherish. Uh, it, it was amazing. The evening was amazing. The speech was amazing. Uh, and I was just quite humbled to sit next to a man so wise and. Uh, and uh, the, to gain his knowledge that he had, uh, he, it's just a, quite a, a humbling and honor for me to be here tonight, to listen to His Holiness speak and to be amongst these uh, honorable people this evening. A tremendous privilege to listen to His Holiness uh, and to meet him tonight. I was fortunate to sit next to him and be able to speak quite informally uh, about a lot of the issues in the community, both the Ahmadian community but also our local community. And uh, I will leave here with uh, very fond memories uh, of a tremendous um, feeling of community spirit and a good sense that uh, people here want to make a positive contribution like I do. I think already uh, the mosque is, uh, is uh, making a tremendous contribution. Some of the charity works and community work uh, set an example for people right throughout our community. I'm very proud to say that I represent uh, a big part of the Ahmadian community because they are such positive contributors, such um, community-minded and community-spirited contributors. Absolutely fantastic. I am so honoured that uh, His Holiness uh, has paid a visit to Logan and that I've got to hear him and meet him. Um, I think he is uh, an inspiration. I had come ready to be inspired. Uh, just came across as a very gentle man. Um, the whole evening, the whole aura of the place this evening was of, uh, of peace and uh, togetherness. Uh, it was. I know that the, the politicians spoke about community and what these people have done for the community. I, I, I would have wanted to have gone one step beyond that to say that these are the people who make community. So that, that, that the things that they did, that they listed, which were all wonderful things, you know, helping with the floods and uh, cleaning up Australia and all of those things, but it, I, I, that's just the manifestation of the people that I, I'd come to know just through, through the students at, uh, at my school. They exhibited the things that, that were, if they just reflected the things that their homes uh, taught them uh, and that the people that they were. And um, somebody just said to me before um, that these, a lot of these people have left Pakistan. I said, well, that was good because it's Pakistan's loss but our gain. And, and that, that was very, very evident there tonight. Look, tonight's event was a real eye-opener for me on, on sort of many levels. Um, seeing the infrastructure on the ground here, the mosque, it's a beautiful mosque. Um, that was a new experience for me. Um, but listening to His Holiness, uh, I must say, when you, you meet someone of his sort of calibre, uh, you have some expectations at the outset that they're going to be a very good speaker. Uh, but what interests me, what impressed me, is that uh, faith aside, uh, His Holiness, I think, applied uh, a practical notion to faith, uh, the expectations of faith, uh, and I guess what it means to be uh, Ahmadiyya, uh, and I guess put it in such a manner so that the broader community, um, those who are not Islamic, get some degree of comfort, I guess, about what your community is about, and that impressed me.